one minute. All right, open is loaded on red. Red to be tracked. My name is Eric Hover, and yet we're talking in a normal voice today. Quiet around here, but for a different reason. No golfers on the course any longer. Everybody's pretty much going home, save for us here, the Sports Nightly crew. Round three of the Marathon Classic. Extremely interesting and shaping up into something that we have seen at Marathon Classics past. A lot of people with the same score. Who knows? We could have a playoff on our hands coming up tomorrow. However, let's get to it right now, round three. And we take you this is the kind of day it was for Stacy Lewis to see where she was after an errant tee shot oh, between two scoreboards. Yeah. She would eventually get things back up on the screen. Lewis is right now. Lewis that. sound on red next. A bogey for horror. And it's just been like this the entire tournament for Stacy. Remember, he Here might dump out of these highlights Birdie a little bit. Butt. Can she at least get one back? Yes, she can. Something to feel good about there. Three birdies, four bogeys. Stacy Lewis even heading into tomorrow's final round. Jennifer Cupcho, the amateur. Boy, she has been some kind of story. Here she is on 15 with Blair a beautiful chip that would save Harvard. She was fantastic. Eight that. under. She is definitely among contention. Again, just an amateur. Jay Marie Green. We talk about Americans in this field. There are a lot of them doing well. Jay Marie Green, one of them. Came in at three under, at six birdies, a double bogey on 18, however. She would have been nine under. Instead, she'll enter the day tomorrow at seven under. Sydney Clanton, also a great day for her. Started out at one under, but here she is on number 12. Watch how long of a birdie part this is. Still rolling and goes in. She shoots a 66 on the day, but on 17, Boy, 17 was doing some great sports today. Look at this horrible lie, but a great chip gets the roll, and it would eventually put in the bird. She was six under on the day. That's the first round group. Here's Stacy. Roll it and take it, track it. Um, that was just great. You know, it was a good chip. It was a lot, e a lot easier than yesterday afternoon. Um, just didn't play very good. Um, just trying to enjoy it. You know, I just I haven't played very good this week, and uh, body's running out of gas, so it's just going to try to enjoy it and get through more. And take it. Alright, so Stacey, keeping it short and sweet, and you know, obviously she's pushed, we've talked about it for years, and she just let get things going. Claire Batista joins us now, and Claire, your thoughts from so many Americans doing really well here in the early going. Really exciting. Right. Um, it's so nice to see the red button go up on top, even though there's a plane just above us, but it'll be a good day tomorrow. All right, and when weather conditions a little bit different today. Overcast, we've been in the hot, hot sun. Now, overcast, a little bit humidity. How does that affect the course? Um, you know, actually, I think that the greens take in the so they're, they're, like they're a little softer, so they're a little more receptive, so a little bit shot, easier yeah. this afternoon than yesterday afternoon, I think. Okay, you mentioned the afternoon of the game, and Claire's so good at the segues. Let's take you out to the group that teed off a little bit later on in the day right Roll. now as we get to that second group of golfers. We'll start with the defending champion, I.K. Kim, starting out at six under. She bogeyed two of her first three holes. That is not good, but this was on number 10, puts it Charlie, nice and cozy right up there by the pin, one, two, and she three, would four, five, knock six. Okay. in the birdie right there. That's the defending champ, and then we talked about 17, Claire. 17 yielded a lot of good scores today. Well, you showed um, Claire that she hit it over into, mm -hmm. so she was chipping back for Eva. 
producing some excellent shots. Eight under, tied for fifth. Ten players tied for fifth at eight under par. Lexi Thompson, we look for some good things out of her. She came in today, four under. Here she is on 17. Again, we keep going back to 17 because that score was yielding a lot of low scores. She would birdie this hole, five under. She's still within shouting distance. There are so many women that are in shouting distance. And then, like we said before, we have seen that before. So don't be surprised if we see some extra golf tomorrow. Jackie Conkalito quickly becoming one of my favorites this year. Here she is on number 10. And we saw IK Camel kind of cozy that up by the snake. This probably the closest shot of the day without going in. Conkalito so close. And then on 14, she's going to knock in the bar, but I want you to watch. You know that 14 is at Rowdy Hole, right? Right. And she's about to acknowledge the fans. <laughs> and then one more. Uh huh. A little bit later afterwards, we're meeting the 19th hole. She's nine under par. Mina Hargay. Shot of the day. It looks like an easy putt, right? But this is an eagle, Claire. It's a great putt. In the war of the crowd there on 18, she is seven under. Can you turn Ricky down Lincecum. green in the Ricky Lincecum, another one of those bit. Americans that we've been talking about. She came in at six under to start the day. Back to 17 we go. The approach. She had a birdie on 16 coming in, so back to back birdies. 10 under, tied for second. I guess you got to steady the nerves on that one, yeah. right? Yeah, it's that close. Talking about Angela Stanford. Angela Stanford, you want to talk about ending the day with a great putt. Five under on the day, a birdie here on number 18, and she joins Lincecum, tied at 10 under par. Look at this pump there, yes! Shaping up for an excellent day tomorrow. Everyone following this Canadian, as you mentioned, Claire, Brooke Henderson here on number 12, a birdie putt, solid. And when you're getting that close on the tee shots, you got to knock that down, right? It's simple, isn't it? <laughs> here she is on 14, though. This is for par. Not everybody having great luck on 14. She would end up with a bogey, but again, she writes the ship that she's been playing so it's well. She doesn't have a shot at her. 17 so again. Good. 11 under par, five birdies, three bogeys. Brooke Henderson, your leader, heading into the final round. Well read. Hi, guys. Uh, I looked at the scores, just walking by the leaderboard there, and there seemed to be a lot of really awesome ones today. So I know Grab that I have to make a lot of birdies and, you know, shoot an awesome score. Yeah, I'm excited to be in this position. Yeah, I feel pretty good. You know, I hit it pretty well today. Kept it in play for the for most part, and uh, made a couple putts, which is obviously the key uh, to this golf course. You, you keep it in the fairway. There's some sneaky holes out there, and uh, make the birdies in the weekend. Uh, I just, you know, I can't really force anything. I just had to do a little bit better every day. Uh, that's my goal. And I really had a fun today. I mean, I've been preaching it all week, and, you know, it seems cliche, but just trying to keep the level head out there. Um, wasn't making any punts early on, but kept it together and got a few back on the back nine, and uh, hopefully give a run at it tomorrow. You know, I just have a lot of confidence in my putter. I think if I could keep that up, then um, tomorrow would be good. But, uh, you know, again, I, I'm just as surprised as anybody, I think. So, birdie. Yeah. I, need to, I need to birdie every hole. Um, but no, really just focus on doing my routine, hopefully feel a little bit better and um, you know, get in the fairway. Yeah, just back. play a lot more solid golf hopefully tomorrow and take a positive out of it. On you. All right, so Lexi's a few shots back, but I mean, five under, six shots back, I mean, she could still make that up. She's one of the best three, in the world. She three, could, but <laughs> the course is playing where even the leaders are probably going to shoot four, five, six under tomorrow. So it would be hard for her to catch up. So you heard Angela Stanford saying she's confident, she's making some putts, but yet she's still a bit surprised that she's this high. I mean, is it okay to surprise yourself at this level? Well, if you surprise yourself on the good side, yeah, <laughs> awesome. That's true. Right? Uh, I want to take it back to yesterday, uh, Claire. In this in this area right here, you said yeah, you needed to make a prediction on who's going to win this. You said, I said Brooke Henderson. Brooke Henderson. All right, well, she's a leader after yesterday. Yep. She's a leader after today. With so many golfers, just a shot or two back, was she going to win it? Are you still as confident? Well, I don't know, because there are some really good players. And I'll tell you the one that I would watch is Christina Kim. Okay. I followed her the first two days, and she's like sneaky good. Mm -hmm. You know, she's just like getting up and down for par. par. All of a sudden, she's four under par. I don't know how she did it. Yeah. But she's kind of, you know, and she, she's been in the uh, background for a long time. I don't I, I always think Christina Kim would be like the golfer that you would want to have on your pro-am. You want to go out and, and, and have a great pro-am because she always has a good time. But she's showing here 
Even though we didn't see her, but she's showing, like you said, she's playing some serious golf here. Yeah, you know. and she's really serious. Those first two rounds, and she rounded out. She, she did a great job. I, I don't know. You know, Brittany's playing great. I'll still go with Brooke, but okay. you're, you're going with Oak I Canada. think there's going to be a playoff. Well, maybe we'll, we'll bet a loony on it. All right. <laughs> Claire, how do we find you? Uh, Clever Tits at Golf Academy again. at the Legacy. All right. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to see this prediction happen tomorrow. Clever Tits, okay. thank you so much. All right, it is time for a break. But when we return, more sports nightly from the green. Marathon Classic green. when we return. Two, two, one. All right, we need Danny over at four, and I need a mic check off. Okay, we are probably a solid 45 seconds in light right now, so you've got plenty of time here with Danny. Danny, if you can hear me, go ahead and talk. One minute. One minute. beautiful Highland Meadows here in Sylvania, Ohio. This is Sports Nightly at the Marathon Classic. And you see there from the shots, it was a little bit overcast today, a little bit hazy. They were talking some major heat. Yeah, it got a little humid, got a little hot, but definitely with that sun behind the clouds, it was not as hot as it could have been. Also, uh, on a personal note, made it tough to shoot as far as the balls coming off the tee. But incredible weather out here in Highland Meadows. Glad to see what it's like tomorrow. Okay, yesterday we talked about a father-daughter combination on the bag. Lizzie Wynn, the St. Ursula alum, out here with her dad on the bag for the first two rounds. Danny Rogers joining us now to talk about a mother-daughter combination that has a little bit of history here in Northwest Ohio. Danny? Yeah, Eric, 26 years ago, Jillian Hellis' mom played here at the Marathon Classic by way of a sponsor exemption given her by tournament director, Jed Silverman. This year, Jillian is playing in the tournament herself, this time as a pro. Being from Rocky River, Ohio, just under two hours two away, Hollis is excited to be back at the Marathon Classic. Roll it. Um, it's, just, it. it's such a great feeling knowing that you're so close. Can you odds that? I did. Yeah. 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 It was fine earlier. It was. Try to get in the car Yeah, so. <laughs> and got here and she knew the story she could have done, but she probably doesn't remember me because she admitted, but 
can't wait to see him. So we get there, and I, I go to introduce myself. He says, oh, I thought you from somewhere. Yes, he gave me an exemption. And I was like, I said, yeah, you're sure you did it. So it's just a really cool story. Super small world, and for them to get to know each other, he, Thank you for finding a work I walked into again. our office a couple years ago. I knew I recognized her, but it had been a long time. And then when she told me who she was, that was, that was just uh, unbelievable. So it's great to see Before, uh, when we watched it, we watched it on red. Julian yeah. playing so well. I'm adding greens just being too high. Career. She's going to be a great pro. I think she'll be the next yeah. Natalie Galbus. Now in her rookie year on the Symmetra Tour, Alice is still most inspired by her mom. She's the she's the main next the main walk, reason let's why walk I do things and play Oakland and just package me. off of red and do the walks off the green. She coached me for a while when I was younger and she's just she's the best. The road to turning pro wasn't easy for Hollis, who began the LPGA Q school while still a student athlete at Georgia. I had two other things that were doing it, so and then finally I'll just do it. And got really far and had to make the decision and my coach was like, you know, you'd be silly enough to do it. You should you should go try it. And he's been behind me and he supports me through it and paid for me to open. So it's been great and I only have actually a couple more classes left. So initially and left in Georgia. So well, I figured so it's perfect timing. Yeah. Now looking back on her journey, Hollis is ready for the next thing. Life throws her away. God takes you down a totally different path and you think you have a plan and then it just totally gets messed up. So just ending up at Georgia was even like a crazy thing for me being from Ohio and to play there. It was awesome. Had a great experience and I learned so much. And thought I was gonna do my last year, but you know, things things change in life and I've always wanted to do this. I don't know how I was gonna do it. I didn't know when I was thirteen years old how I was gonna eventually and pro, but I knew I was going to. And to be able to do this now is just awesome. And take it. Only 21 years old, but so wise. Off camera, she was asked if she feels any pressure about this basically being a hometown tournament for her. She said no, because that would mean it's all about her, and it's not, which was so awesome to hear someone so young. She's only been a pro for two months, so it was so cool to meet and check out what Jillian's doing. Eric? Well, we heard Judd say that, you know, she's going to be the next Natalie Goldis, but yeah, like you said, she's young. She missed the cut by one stroke, so I'm sure she's disappointed, but she's got plenty of time to come back. And then, right, okay, Danny, before you get out of here, tomorrow you've got a great, now we've done no days off for high school football coaches for a while here, right? But you've got a special edition of no days off coming up tomorrow. Yes, it's with the Hannah Storm of ESPN. She just celebrated her 10 year anniversary. So she came and she talked to me about longevity in the business as a sports broadcaster and also what she touched on at the Women's Summit that was here earlier this week. Yeah, awesome. All right, Danny Rogers, thank you so much. Doing football last night, doing golf for us today. All right, it is time for a break, but when we return at Sports Nightly at the Marathon Classic, we talk about the 14th green all week long. We are going to get a special look at it. You will not want to miss this after we return here by Sports Nightly at the Marathon Classic. One, two, one, three. Okay, we are about uh, That's a good start, 12 guys. seconds under. So we'll All right, we'll come in on beauty shot off of green. Then out to Eric on one, he'll toss to Oaklander package on red. Oh. Should have had you made a lower third for me for the one and a half seconds that I'm on camera. I saw, I saw you were in there. No, I should have been wrong. Pete Seymour's a little cameo as well.
30 seconds. Fifteen. Ten. Good nine. Good shot. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Roll it. Oh, Mike. Go ahead. Round three in the books here at Highland Meadows. Brooke Anderson, the Canadian. Your, your leader by one stroke. Welcome back to Sports Nightly at the Marathon Classic. Okay, so we have talked about this all week long. We talked about it last year. It, it's it's incredibly popular, not just at this course, but at other tournaments. But only Toledo, only Highland Meadows, has the 14th green. We saw the caddy races today. Two photographers from the Golf Channel took part in the race. We saw Laura Diaz out running the caddies. And yeah, they also have some adult beverages for sale. Our Eric Oblander from our friends at Beacon made a trip out to the 14th green, and he had a good time. Right. Good morning, everyone. I'm a little nervous. Uh, today, I will be running a classic marathon. What? Oh, the marathon classic. Oh, it's golf? Oh, let's go. <laughs> We're with Kim from Buckeye Broadband. Tell me what's going on today here in this crazy tent. We have a putt putty green. You get three chances. If you get a hole in one, you can win an iPad. Excellent, thanks. Let's go. Yeah. Woo. We're here with our friends at the Golf Channel. And you recognize me? I'm Eric Harbour from uh, Horse Nightly. You recognize me? Here it is. Here it is. You got me? Not the Eric Harbour, I know. <laughs> nice ride over there. It'd be a shame if someone gouged BCSN in it with their key. Perfect. We're on the famed 14th hole party hole, so let's go grab a beer. We'll put this one on the underhill account. This is significantly better. Now, can I ask you a question? Have you seen Jamie Farr today? Well, then can we just go? All right, well that does it for us here at the Marathon Classic. I've learned three things about golf. One is that it's very hot. Two is that you need a car to really have any fun. Three is if you have a beer, look out, because someone will steal it at any time if you're on the clock. That does it for us, thanks a lot. <laughs> Eric Oldlander, Eric Hopper. Okay, so clearly I was completely misinformed. That wasn't explicitly about the 14th hole, but I think you got the picture of what happens over there. Eric doing a great job, and somebody having some fun out here no matter what he's doing. Uh, on company time. On company all time. Green. That's impressive. All, all right, it is time for a break, but when we return, sports silent hit the marathon classic. We get social with Danny Rogers making a return um, appearance. Two, one, break. Okay, we're about 15. We're about 15 seconds over, so we're still good time wise. All right, two shot on Cam, two single shot on Danny. Bump in on red, then out to camera two. I got Danny's lower on one, and then we'll go two, one, two. Cool. And I'll need that Danny social video on you. Yep, it's up there. Oh, thank you. One minute. Check, like, 
I just came from 14 the whole team. Good 